Part 2 continues our video with 1 pair versus 2 pair, 3 pin versus 5 pin, maximum cable length, and DMX over CAT5 cable. 1 pair versus 2 pair cable. Although a second data pair has always been optional in DMX cables, a few powerful production houses require that all their DMX cables have both pairs wired. This is because it can be difficult from the outside of a cable to determine if a cable is single or two pair. If a production is expecting to use the second pair for some purpose, and there is one pair cable mixed up in the rig, it can be painfully difficult to find and correct the problem. Having only two pair cable in inventory eliminates this chance. The extra cost of inventorying only two pair cable is justified in these big productions where troubleshooting time is unbelievably expensive. However, in my humble opinion, for the vast majority of DMX users, two pair cable is a waste of money. I personally am an advocate of single pair cable for portable cables. On the other hand, for in wall installations, where repair or replacement would be difficult, I'll admit, installing two pair cable might be a good idea. 3 pin versus 5 pin cable. Whenever this topic is mentioned at the standards meetings, the room gets very tense. There are strong opinions on both sides. However, the fact is, the original standard, written in 1986, and every revision since, specifies the 5-pin XLR connector. No ifs, ands, or buts. The most recent revision goes so far as to specifically exclude the 3-pin XLR as an acceptable DMX connector. So, according to the ANSI standard, to be called a DMX cable, it must have 5-pin XLRs on each end. Or, more accurately, it must not use 3-pin XLRs. That said, there are a number of companies making low capacitance 120 ohm data cables with 3 pin XLRs, which they call DMX cables. As an aside, to the best of my knowledge, here is how the 5 pin versus 3 pin debate got started. In 1986, when DMX 512 was written, the 5 pin XLR was selected as the standard connector for DMX 512. I believe this was because the authors of the standard didn't want DMX connectors and cables to be confused with audio or intercom lines, and by specifying the 5 pin XLR, the two unused pins could be reserved for an optional second data line. Just after DMX 512 was written, automated lighting fixtures such as the IntelliBeam were introduced. These used 3 pin XLRs to connect their own proprietary controllers to the fixtures. Later, software modifications allowed these fixtures to be controlled by DMX but the fixtures were still fitted with 3-pin XLRs. Other DMX compatible fixtures, fitted with 3-pin XLRs, followed and now there are as many DMX compatible products using 3-pin XLRs as 5-pin XLRs. Still, the ANSI standard is 5-pin. Maximum Cable Length Using DMX 512 cable, a run of 1,000 feet is a good rule of thumb. This length provides a good safety margin in case the source signal is weak or one of the DMX receivers is out of spec. If you're stuck with cable which may not be 120 ohm low capacitance cable, limit your runs to 250 feet. If you must go further than 1000 feet without a booster amp, keep the length to an absolute maximum of 3000 feet. And if you must push it to the 3000 foot limit, I'd suggest placing a booster at the source end, a sensitive receiver at the destination end, and use a continuous run of cable with no splices or taps along the way. So, the numbers to remember are 250 feet with bad cable, 1,000 feet with good cable, and 3,000 feet with really good cable, no taps, a continuous run, a powerful driver, and a sensitive receiver. DMX over CAT5 cable. My last topic is, can CAT5 cable, or CAT5E, or CAT6, be used to carry DMX512 signals? The answer is, Yes, provided it's installed in metallic conduit. DMX512 cable is supposed to be shielded cable, so the metallic conduit provides the shielding. CAT5 cable has a tightly controlled impedance and low capacitance, making it ideal for high-speed data. There is even a recommended pinout and color code for using CAT5 to carry DMX. That concludes my rambling for now. Thanks for tuning in.
We live. We live. We live. At the beginning of my video, <laughs> stop it. At the beginning of my videos, I like to list, and then we cut back because I haven't memorized the next one yet. Okay. I'll, are we ready? Cut. Take two. Although a second pair of data. Let's try again. A few powerful production companies require the. Oh gosh, I did better the first time. And there is one pair of cable mixed up in the rig. It can be difficultly painful. Painfully. You ought to try this. It's hard. The most recent revision goes so far as to specifically exclude the three-pin XLR as an except. Except. Uh, well, the. Uh, the three-pin, five-pin controversy. To my best, to the. However, in my humble opinion, for the. Okay, we can start over. Oh, no, I'm... Using DMX 512 cable, a run of 1,000 feet. Part 2 continues our video with 1 pair versus 2 pair, 3 pair versus 5 pair, 6 pair versus 100 pair, and 7 gigajit per watt pair. Equals. Rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. It sets off the confetti cannons during a critical three point shot. It sets off the confetti cannons during a critical three-point shot. 